welcome to Boise's Barrelback, episode four. Um, this is, uh, I've done the transom now on the first frame. There's a total of seven frames apart from the transom. And I am now on frame number two, um, which I've got on the plan here. This is highlighted in orange. And same there, the deck inlay goes in there. This frame cuts short um, because this is the engine bay. Um, there's a big gap uh, with double doors that will give us access uh, to the engine, whatever that may be. Um, the plans give it for a V8 petrol or v V6 petrol. Um, I'm trying to put a twin electric motor in, but at the moment it's not looking good. Um, my first quote has come back. In fact, I've had two. An American firm wanted $130,000 which I thought was crazy and then a Dutch firm has asked for 228,000 euros so uh, I'm still researching anyway um, I've put my carbon paper in I've reversed my well, I've done one half of the plan reversed it here so a new sheet of plywood on here and you can see I've got um, frames two and three ready scribed out here ready for fitting um, let the fun begin so here we go, um, it's uh, frame two is a 160 wide piece of wood, so I've had to use one of my big ones, um, the 225, and, um, and I've chopped it down there on the saw, you can see the piece over, and then by realigning this piece of wood um, on my line at the bottom here, on the centre line, and then using the carbon paper from there, just scratching out, there's my mark there and then what I do is I just flip the piece of wood over and I do the same on the other side so I have to cut it from two different directions and that's how I get the shape of my wood. Ah, hello again, morning. Well here I am, um, I've cut all the pieces out. It's a little bit simpler this one for uh, frame two but this is my bottom piece here which is obviously a solid piece because that is at the bottom of the boat as a structural member. This is my cutout for the uh, the two keel timbers, which will need fairing into those two there. And this is the side, and this is the top piece again. Um, I just pre-assemble them again here, just to show that once you've done it, you can see the orange line all the way below. It follows the curve pretty much perfectly, and the same up the side here. Um, it's pretty good all the way there up to the shear point. With, within a millimetre or so. So I'm just about to start cutting again these um, slots here to make that joint a much better glue joint. And um, I'll show you up the top here, I've cut this piece again uh, with this extra fillet down here. Um, that's where it should go, across there. And as I explained before, you've got the sheer wood down here, there's lots of filler pieces, there's about four or five bits of wood there. And the carling point here for the hatchway um, I mean, it just cuts into that piece of wood there. That's you've got what about 40, 50 mil max there between the two points, which would obviously be the stress point. Um, so what I've done is to do the same again and to cut that out down there to give it a bit more. In fact, I can show you there on the um, on the frame I did yesterday, and then I put the three screws down there. The reason being that if I start cutting down here. I don't want to start, I mean, I would put a screw there, but um, if I'm going to cut that out, I don't want to be cutting into the screws. So um, I put them down there, that's all glued up, and it seems solid enough. I suppose this has just got to take the weight of the deck at the end of the day. This is the bit that flexes with the side, uh, the forces of the sea on the side of the boat, and obviously the bottom. So that's the main structural strength. So, um, all good. And just a quick um, video of uh, frame number one, which um, I've encapsulated with the uh, epoxy, and that's uh, been done on both sides. I've left the, the top, obviously, as yeah, bare wood, I'll sand those bits down because you want that as a gluing surface. But um, I'm very pleased with it, and that looks really strong. That uh, corner bracket there and there. So here we go, um, frame number three um, is the one I'm looking at now, which I have transferred to uh, to my desk. That's this one here, and um, put my setup levels and measured them down. Uh, transferred from the uh, 
the drawing to the table and I've marked that on my piece of wood uh, which is here so there's the frame measured them down and they're all the correct um, distances so it looks good to cut so I'll put the fan on all it needs to take that off yeah and there's a little bit of my pencil line just here take that off so I can't see any more pencil line there so I can go and try it out again I just have a little sand take the sharp edges off quite a lot of trial and error in this and just keep taking little bits of wood off until you get it right so I rely on the center line put it on my pencil mark just there and just up here I think I've got that right so we're bang on so you can see this one is pretty good all the way now look at that that's just my pencil line is just showing there maybe I mean, we're talking half a millimetre there. Maybe we could just clear that pencil line off. Just a couple of scrapes there. And uh, I need to take some off the edge there as well. That I can do with my sanding machine. Let's just have a look at that again. Bang on the centre line. Good there. Pencil line is good there. Just that little bit there. And it looks to me like that's there and that needs to go there so it's literally that much there and this one I mean that's pretty good on the line I think right let's do that again and then this one be done. My next gadget is going to be a wood vise. Bingo! Back to the line. What a great machine that is. So, hopefully, for the last time on the pencil line, on the center line we're good here pencil line is good there actually it's a little bit more isn't it just there and that looks good there so I need to just shave that corner off 
So, the last time may be, pencil line, center line, it's good, that's good. God, that's just nearest damn it, isn't it? And the curve looks good there. And if I look along there, I mean, that's not a bad curve. That's following that anyway. It's good. On to the uprights next, let's start cutting them. Morning. Well, continuation of uh, frame three. I've cut out the uh, the base piece of wood. I've got the two uprights uh, today, and uh, I've got these. I've managed to actually make them all fit, which is uh, really good news. I've marked out my plywood corner panels here to strengthen it up. Um, as you can see, I've also made that joint, uh, the lapping joint here, and I filled in the corners with these triangular pieces uh, to strengthen it up so um, I'm actually just about to glue this up and then I'm going to hold these in place I've decided with a couple of screws to stop them moving past the line once I've got them glued then I'll screw these in and then I can put a couple of tack nails into the joint here just to to hold it tight make sure nothing moves I've put some screws here in the frames with washers to hold the base frame in there so nothing could move which has always been a problem before um, so this seems to be a way of holding the frame still so I've just uh, glued up number frame number three at least on one side and the reason I've done that is I tried securing um, a screw down there in that top lug uh, to hold it down while well, you put the nails in here and this um, reinforcement piece here to hold it all together um, I've deliberately cut it a couple of mil wide because I can use my sander to sand that back off and I've put my block inside there and done that pretty much and it's um, it's worked out pretty well actually by putting screws in here I've held it down here with some screws and up there and the proof of the pudding was that when you check put the tape there it's uh, on 17 and a half to that corner uh, and if I do it to this one, that corner, I mean it's bang on to the millimeter, 117 and a half. Um, I've not achieved that accuracy with the other frames, they were all within sort of one or two millimeters. Uh, this one is spot on, so that's what you've got to do and to hold the frame down before you glue it. Good. Oh, morning. Well, here we are again in the basement. I'm still doing frame number three and yesterday I tried something different, which was to um, to screw these down on my wooden table here so that they couldn't move when you're banging those bits of plywood in there um, because they just the first couple of nails just move all over the place. And if you fix it down, um, it just helps to get this whole damn thing because these have got to be dead upright. And what I did was just to measure from the end point there to the middle there to see if I'd got these at exactly the same distance. Obviously on the plans, they were following the line here, so they were close, but you know, I'm trying to get them as near as dead on as I can. And they were pretty much within a millimeter, which was fine. So that worked out pretty good. And then I've just got to cut this piece on, um, which will be a fixed distance and hopefully it will fit. So that's what I'm doing over here. So I just wanted to um, discuss a few tools that have been, really really good i mean the electric plane um i've got all these dewalts because they all fit the 18 volt battery um, and then i don't need a battery for every one i can move them around that's good for taking obviously on straight pieces of wood large amounts of uh, wood to remove this is really good with that um, sanding rotating attachment i bought a makita um power planer power sander even because that just takes off large amounts of uh, wood if you need um, but when you get to uh, the smaller amounts of wood, you get to this piece of kit, which I'm learning to love. This is the spoke shave. And uh, I, uh, with my um, grinding block, I stop every now and then and grind the 
um, the angle there onto that blade to sharpen it so it is super sharp what a difference it makes and um, that has just been brilliant on this and this is my top piece of wood and I've cut it roughly on the bandsaw which is the most useful thing but then you've got to make this fair curve here and this thing here I find is just fantastic for doing that once you get to grips with it and you set the blade at the right height you can make the tiny adjustments here on those screws um, and you can pull the blade out if it's taken off too much put it back in again if you want some more you get the feel for it eventually as you do all these tools and then you end up in sort of 10 minutes it's taken me to bring these back down to the line and then when I look down there I get a nice smooth curve which um, is taken for granted I think in a lot of uh, woodworking shops but if you don't have the skill you've got to learn them and I'm learning them and uh, so that's really good really good really useful tools you've got to have the tools to do this job whopping great fun is full of bad people do they so they need a gun Exactly. Round of applause for Annie. Thanks. So, um, this is my top piece for frame three, uh, which I have cut out from the uh, the dotted lines from the plan. So I put it on with the carbon paper, but then I just need to smooth it back, back to the line. Um, so I've got a little bit here, less than a millimeter, and um, the tool is the spoke shave. This is um, just an awesome tool. And you've got the adjustment here for um, the blade, which you can see there when it's um, perpendicular across the gap. And then you can just wind it in a quarter turn and uh, you get a little bit more. And you can adjust the amount of blade you want, obviously, for the amount of wood you want to take. But it is just a fantastic tool. And finding that uh, you can see exactly if you're level or if you're planing to one side because you can see it on the top of the wood and then when you put your right angle you see that is just absolutely spot on and then you can just play away till you get down to your line and you can see how good it is at taking off the wood and then you look across that curve and I just got this perfect curve and then to finish it off I can put a bit of sandpaper on that take off the sharp edges and I've got these beautiful curves and I wish I'd have found that out earlier but it's kind of a learning exercise isn't it but that's how I'm doing it I've done the underside now so I've got two nice curves and that's uh, ready I think to mate up with the top of the frame see how we go do, 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 do. hi guys here we are again a um, little bit of an update there's been a bit of a gap and uh, what I'm going to do is just uh, wrap episode four up, I think, and then I'll get that one out uh, on eBay for anyone that's interested. Um, the holdup has been the uh, lack of wood, uh, broad wood. I've, um, it's, uh, the problem is here. Um, I've made, this is frame four, this is frame five. Four and five again, uh, the sides. But the problem is, is that as I get towards the front of the boat, here you can see that the chine is beginning to increase and and at um, this one frame five from the setup level down three inches uh, or 89 mil is 243 millimeters and uh, that wasn't particularly clear and anyway I didn't have enough wood so I've ordered it and it's uh, had to come from England they were busy it took a couple of weeks to um, to cut it and um, Add a mahogany this time um, because I've got some of the uh, the deck boards as well, and the mahogany was a very good price, uh, and it was um, they must have been doing an offer because it was uh, virtually the same as uh, the Douglas fir. So that has uh, come across from England. Of course, we've got through all the customs and all the laws to get it uh, into the country, uh, which has been somewhat expensive to say the least. But the the quality of the wood demands. That you've got to have the best quality this douglas fir stuff seems really good uh, mahogany would be even better and i don't know why i didn't do that in the first place it was an option but but these things are not seen uh, once the boat is built these are all covered up on the inside so it's it's not necessary it's it's got to be whatever is practical and it is strong enough to to do the uh, the work that it requires and this bit here obviously as we get to the front of the boat uh, that has to be extremely strong because that's a structural member 
So it's arrived in Portugal, um, but because it's in 4.2 meter lengths, I can't get it in a car. So they have to deliver it in their van, which they're gonna do tomorrow. So I might do a quick vid of that as, uh, as they arrive. And um, then I can crack on with that, which would be good. I've got uh, the best part of two more frames. And then I think that leaves me um, six and seven left to do at the front. And uh, then that's the, uh, the completion of the frames. So um, next episode, um, in fact, you can see here, this is the beginning of the, uh, the motor string, as they call it, which is, the, uh, which is basically the two spines of the boat. Um, the keel uh, is not particularly thick member, although it is a, a structural member. These two things seem to bear the weight of obviously a couple of hundred kilos of engine plus the fuel tank, plus the people, obviously. So these are the structural members. So I've started working on those till I can get the wood. And uh, I'll start on that on the next episode and uh, go into a little bit more detail as to uh, what I'm doing, how I'm doing it. And um, hopefully that will make sense. Um, okay, we'll catch you later.